I'd like to call the, uh, the council meeting, uh, the regular meeting of Thursday, April 20th of the City Council, the Library Board, the Housing Authority Board, and the City Council representing the Redevelopment Successor Agency. At this time, we will have a flag salute and the presentation of colors by the Sheriff Explorer Color Guard. Please stand. Please stand. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, that should make us all very proud. Um, may we have the uh, roll call, please? Council Member Hobart? Here. Council Member Kite? Here. Council Member Smotrich? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Townsend? Here. And Mayor Wild? Thank you, here. The, uh, the first presentation will be the ANA Inspiration Update by Sean Smith, our Director of Economic Development and Marketing. Thank you very much, Mayor. I'd like to ask uh, our Marketing and Special Events Coordinator, Mike Salangi, along with the ANA Inspiration Tournament Director, Mr. Gabe Cotting, to please come up for the presentation. Thank you, Sean. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Annually, the ANA Inspiration is the city's most important marketing endeavor. Throughout the past several years, the tournament's popularity has grown in both on-site attendance and television viewership. One of the many assets the city receives as a part of our sponsorship package is the annual Mayor's Welcome Message that is aired on the Golf Channel during the telecast. At this time, I would like to share with you this year's Mayor's Welcome Message. Hello and welcome to the 2017 ANA Inspiration here in beautiful Rancho Mirage the heart of the Palm Springs Valley. Each year, visitors from around the world gather here to witness history with the champion's leap in the Poppy's Pond. Lydia, you made the leap last year. It was incredible, and we certainly hope you make it again this year. Yes, I did, Mr. Mayor. Since I began playing golf, it's been a huge goal of mine to win the ANA Inspiration and take the leap into Poppy's Pond. It's a memory that I'll never forget. And it's a memory, Lydia, that I'll cherish forever. Perhaps you can join us next year in Rancho Mirage and be a part of history, too. How about that? Yay. That was a lot of fun. We enjoyed that every year. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Gabe Cotting, the tournament director of the ANA Inspiration. He's going to talk to you about a few highlights and show a video recapping the 2017 tournament. Gabe? Thank you, Mike, uh, city staff, Mr. Mayor, city council. Thank you guys uh, for having me here today. Um, I do have a recap video that I'd like to show, and then I'm going to run over a couple highlights from this year's uh, ANA Inspiration.
14-year-old Lucy Lee, who earned a spot in this week's A&A Inspiration by winning the A&A Junior Inspiration at Mission Hills on Sunday. Lee, who shot a final round of 72 to win by three strokes, will be one of six amateurs in the field for the season's first major. Well done for her. This week has been an inspiration for me. This was the uh, 46th staging of the a, a Inspiration since 1972. Mission Hills Country Club opened in 1971. The tournament started in 1972. And as we've said here before, it's the second only to the men's masters the following week of uh, longest tenured tournament in the same location. So we're very proud of that history. We kicked off the week with our a, a Junior Inspiration, which was a new joint venture with the American Junior Golf Association. We welcomed 40 juniors from seven different countries and uh, about 14 different states in, uh, in the United States. And they were joined by 20 legends and Hall of Famers of the game and competed. And as you saw, Lucy Lee, uh, 14 years old from San Francisco, won the event and out of six of the top amateurs in the world was the only one that made the cut. And she also finished low amateur in the tournament. So a bright future ahead for uh, Miss Lucy Lee. Um, we also um, staged the second installment of our a a Inspiring Women in Sports Conference. And it was held once again in our a, a pavilion with about 350 sponsors and guests and, uh, and juniors. Um, but it was also broadcast on Facebook Live to about almost 40,000 people uh, that tuned in to watch this. So for a second year event, little known, uh, it was, those were incredible uh, broadcast numbers for, uh, for a live streaming event. Um, it featured, it featured uh, tennis icon Billie Jean King, uh, Maria Sharapova, uh, gold Olympic gymnast Ali Reisman, and then we had also some ESPN reporters and broadcasters that are the first to broadcast their sports. Um, so it was a fantastic event and we look forward to con continuing that as well. Uh, about 50,000 people attended the event for the week. Um, our international TV uh, distribution topped the 500 million household mark. Uh, so that's up considerably from year over year and it's broadcast in about 166 territories. Uh, overall viewership was up 7% for the week. Um, and after we had the uh, controversial rules call, which uh, I certainly didn't agree with and was kind of a heartbreaker, but our viewership was up 26% during those final hours. Um, incredibly proud of our brand because a 22-year-old who acted, I thought, with grace and class uh, in the midst when I probably would have ran off and, and uh, you wouldn't have been able to find me if that happened to me. Uh, so I think what it's going to do is lend a shoulder to the, to the rules of golf and be a, a prime example of why they need to be revisited. But um, we, we don't get the type of coverage. We don't get CNN. We don't get Good Morning America. We don't get um, every player in the Masters field being asked the same question. What do you think about the Lexi ruling? So the amount of coverage and the awareness that came to the City of Ranch Mirage and came to a and as a brand was incredible. No one's blaming a and They're blaming the USGA and the LPGA. So we kind of got the benefit of the boost without, uh, without any of that. So um, we're just, uh, we're incredibly, uh, Incredibly fortunate to all share in this history, and I want to thank the City of Rancho Mirage as a host, Mission Hills Country Club, and especially the City Council and staff for, uh, for another um, fantastic event. So thank you.
Thank you, Gabe. It was an incredible event. Probably uh, the single uh, most important for, uh, for our city, obviously, with the maximum coverage. The next uh, presentation will be the Relay for Life update by Isaiah Hagerman, our Director of Administrative Services. Isaiah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, members of the City Council, uh, we just wanted to update you on the uh, results of our uh, American Cancer Society fundraising efforts. Uh, as you know, we participated in the West Valley City's Relay for Life at Cathedral City High School. Uh, we had a, a great showing by elected officials and city staff, and it was just a lot of fun. So I just wanted to uh, once again thank the entire city council for your support of the, the team and thank all the city staff that came out and participated in this process. At the end of the day, we were the number one fundraising team in the event, and uh, our city team uh, raised $12,973 for the American okay. Cancer Society. That's great. I say a special thanks should go out to Sandra, too, who really has taken this program from nothing a few years ago to this kind of success, and I know she's had great support from the staff in putting it all together. She did a great job. Absolutely. Sanders, our team captain and really the leader of the group that gets everybody charged. Uh, Mayor Weil had the opportunity to uh, kick off the ceremony, uh, and he did it in great fashion. Uh, so thank you for that, Mayor Weil. That was a great event and uh, great success. Uh, congratulations to our city. The next uh, will be a presentation of the Desert X uh, by Council Member Richard Kite. Thank you, Mayor. And this will be the last time we'll say thank you, Mayor. Exactly. But thank you, Mayor. Exactly. Say it again, would you? Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and good afternoon, everyone. And uh, we're here to talk a little bit about what the Cultural uh, Commission has been doing over the last year. Uh, the Desert X is an area where you've probably seen a lot written in the last few weeks about the unusual art. And so we're going to go through and just tell you a little bit about what's going on at the cultural events in the past and then talk and show you some pictures of the Desert X. And uh, so the event really began in November of this year, or last year, and Richard Glacier was the pianist who was there and did his normal great job. He performed on his Steinway as he never has before, and uh, it was a sellout crowd for the library for one of the many events of the Cultural Commission. Then in uh, 2017, at the beginning of last year, that we presented Cal David and Lori Bono with an evening of progressive rock, and this was followed by Etienne Guerra on the violin. Again, another sellout crowd. In March, the third annual tribute to baseball kicked off in the, 19, or the 2017 baseball season. The event featured Commissioner Frank Farino, Bill Marks, along with our library director, David Bryant. And it was a great success again. And uh, for the third year, we had free hot dogs, which brought out everybody. So it was a great event. The next event was the long-awaited annual Rancho Mirage Artist Home and Studio Tour. This tour attracted over 400 people at different, nine different homes. And we owe a great deal of thanks to the artist and volunteer chairman Gene Range, who, who actually produced the event. Finally, the bus tour to six Desert X installations was attended by about 46 residents who all enjoyed the unusual bus trip and the array of different art. None of us really knew what to expect as we started the day, and it really turned out to be quite a, an unusual event. So we started out at the library, and uh, we went to Sunnylands first. You want to back that up? That's the, um, uh, that's the blue female sculpture at Sunnylands. If you go into Sunnylands off to the right-hand side of the uh, back entrance, uh, there's a large circle there, and this is the sculpture for Desert X. We then proceeded to Rancho Mirage for the Circle of Chrome, and this is really an unusual event. It's sitting out in the middle of the desert. You have to hike in a few hundred yards. And it's all these chrome tubes, and they make a big circle. And it's quite an unusual uh, feeling once you get inside of this. 
and look at all the reflection that's going on. The next stop was up Highway 74 beyond the uh, ranch or beyond Palm Desert's community church. And it was a large wall done by Claudia uh, Comedy. And uh, you get the closer to this, it starts to make you a little dizzy. We had people that said they were gonna pass out because they were standing too close to the wall and the ups and downs started to affect them. But it was uh, unusual, it's still up there. Stop four was at the Whitewater Preserve at the Visitor Center. We had lunch up there and here's the view of the earthen art. After lunch, we were back on the bus leaving Whitewater. We then proceeded to the Racket Club Drive in North Palm Springs for the mirrored uh, Mirage House. And this is all mirrors, all inside and outside. You've probably read a little bit in the newspaper over the last week or so about the number of people that have been going up to this house. And it's actually on private property being developed as a long range development in that area. But it's really unusual. And when we were up there, the house was uh, totally surrounded by people, cars, buses, etc. Finally, the last stop in the Palm Springs Art Museum was a decorated wind turbine blade. And this was painted uh, by the artist, Jeffrey uh, Gibson and it sits out in front of the uh, Palm Springs Art Museum. The exhibit will actually continue through the end of this month. There are a total of 16 total pieces in the artwork and you've got a week and a half to two weeks to go out and see this. You've got the opportunity, it's really worthwhile. Uh, Iris and I served as advisors to the commission and we had a great time in helping the commission put the, all these programs together. We do have some of the cultural commission members here today. Suzanne Matthews. Suzanne, we'd like to stand up. She's chairman and Sally Treadman is vice chair. I don't think Julie's here today, Julie Childers. Uh, Frank Farino is here, our baseball guy. And Joyce Virtue is here. Uh, the Cultural Commission has really done a great job this last year. And over the last couple of years, we've expanded significantly into the type of programs that we do. And it's really uh, doing great part to our library director and staff liaison, David Bryant. David, would you like to stand up? So we're looking forward to 2017-18 to another great opportunity to bring culture to the residents of the Valley. Thanks to you who attended these events. And if you didn't this last year, we look forward to seeing you over the next year. And that's it for today, Mayor. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> the cultural level of our city and the entire Valley has mm. been rising. Uh, at an increasingly fast level. We can all be very proud. Uh, this valley used to be known for tennis and golf. It's now known for culture, tennis, golf, and a variety of other things. And uh, it's an area that we can all be very proud of. The, uh, the next item will be the non-agenda public comments. I have one request from Michael Potts. Uh, Michael, if you would, uh, general announcement regarding the Chamber of Commerce. Good afternoon. Just want to bring you greetings from the Chamber. And Mr. Mayor, uh, the Council makes us all proud. You mentioned earlier that somebody made, made us proud. Certainly you all do that for us. Um, we gladly partnered with the Emergency Preparedness Commission over the last several months. And this past week we had the Quake Smart event uh, which had 100 um, uh, registrants, and it was a great uh, program that hopefully got the word out to a lot of our residents about things that could happen and what you should do to be prepared for quakes. Monday night of this last week, we had a ribbon cutting at Bernie's just across the, the way, which was a huge success. Uh, we also had, on Tuesday, the ribbon cutting at House of Pokey. The state of the city uh, in March, we had over 200 people there, it was a great event, and we certainly appreciate everybody's attendance of that. 
Uh, we've had 16 new members to the Chamber of Commerce in the last two months. One thing that we have started, thanks to the staff at the Chamber, is we have a new member orientation that we do once a month uh, that has been very, very successful, and it gives the new members an opportunity to learn about the Chamber, learn the ways that the Chamber can help them in ways that they can help their business by being involved. Uh, we have the Nurses Appreciation Lunch coming up on the 15th of May, our 12th annual. It will be at the Omni Rancho Las Palmas, and we look forward to having you all there. And uh, lastly, just want to thank the City Council for your continued support for the Chamber of Commerce. Um, it's support from you that helps us uh, continue to grow the Chamber, uh, the best Chamber in the Valley. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. The Chamber does an incredible job. Is there uh, anyone else in the audience that would like to speak that did not fill out a form? Yes, Larry. Larry Nichols. Larry Nichols, Ranch and Barrage. I'm more of a background kind of guy, <clears throat> but I want to say a happy day and a sad day. Ted, you have been a great mayor. I think I speak for the residents of Rancho Mirage. You have made yourself available to almost everybody. Does anybody go to three Christmas tree lightings? One, two, three in three days. Do they stop at our affordable housing and bring flowers to a hundred plus year old lady that fell in love with you, by the way? <laughs> You've made yourself available to all the residents and that's what makes us a proud city. Every one of our council people stand up and are recognized. They help the community, led by the mayor. This gentleman over here got some big shoes to fill, and I'm sure he can do it. Thanks again, Tim. Thank you, Larry. Well, we have a great city. We want to keep it that way, and I'm sure we will. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak? If not, uh, the next item will be the mayor's comments, and I do have a few. Uh, I have certain thank yous uh, that uh, are in order for, for me for the past year, and I'm going to start uh, with my wonderful wife. Uh, Jenny, if you would, please, to stand up. Honey, I could not do it without you. You are an inspiration. Uh, you are a sounding board. Uh, I will say I get irritated when you're right and I'm wrong, <laughs> which happens frequently. Uh, but you've been a great inspiration, support, and uh, I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate it. <clears throat> I want to thank my fellow colleagues. Uh, Dana, uh, the person that I label as the Mayor Emeritus, uh, a friend that goes back 25 years, uh, who has been a terrific support and uh, mentor for me in many ways. Richard, my campaign running mate, uh, we had a great time during the recent election. Iris and Charlie, thank you for everything that you have done. The philosophy of this council is very simple, and it makes our job quite easy. And the axiom is essentially, is it or is it not good for Rancho Mirage? That is essentially what we're doing here. Uh, there's no duplicity, it's only the benefit of our city, and that's what's made it work so well. We have an amazing staff. Randy Binder. Yeah, sit down, Randy. <laughs> uh, is the best city manager in the Coachella Valley, and obviously he's not shy. I 
Isaiah Hagerman, our Director of Administra Administrative Services, goes far beyond that. Uh, his contributions in the financial area, his insight and discipline have done a remarkable, uh, have made a remarkable contribution to our city. Isaiah, just a wonderful job. Sean Smith hit the ground running in his new capacity as Director of Marketing and Communication, and he took it to a new level of excellence. Sean, you did a great job. It has been fun and a pleasure accomplishing, I think, a number of the things that we set out to do. Thank you, my friend. Mark Zambito, our Public Works Director, had an exceptional year. He handled the challenge of the amphitheater with aplomb. Uh, I know he was stressed, but you wouldn't have known it. And uh, again, uh, Mark, it was terrific. Uh, what you did with the opening of the dog park was fabulous. Uh, and breaking ground for the observatory, uh, which we did the other day. He even got me a hat that was way too small or too sure. large but we had fun. Congratulations, Mark, a great year. <laughs> David Bryant, uh, our number one library director uh, at the number one library in California and one of the best in the country. David, a magnificent job. You have truly led the library, which is the cultural cultural core of our city. Thank you for all of your contribution. It's been magnificent. <laughs> Steve Quintanilla. Steve, I don't know of anybody that knows government from a legal standpoint better than you. You have just been terrific. You have not only guided us, but you've educated us. And I can't thank you enough for all of your contribution. <clears throat> Sandra Johnson, who's not here, uh, who I just love to death, does a great job at directing code enforcement and building. She is terrific when there is complaints. Uh, she is the one that generally tackles it. Uh, she's out there resolving it. She takes tremendous uh, pressure off of the council and the rest of the staff. Bud Kopp. Bud leads a stellar planning department uh, that has terrific people working for him. Bud, great job. I would like to name every single person that works for the city because everyone has made a contribution. Forgive me for not being able to do that, but again, I thank, I thank every one of you individually. The face of our city and the first people you meet at the counter are Shirley Pardita, Robin Bleeker, Joni Albee, Christy Ramos, and Sylvia Nino. These are the people that you see when you come into City Hall. Sylvia is the Elmer's glue. She deals with five council members flawlessly, soothing their egos and effortlessly, effortlessly getting the work done. Just an amazing person. All of, all of these people represent the city in an exemplary way. We thank every single one of you. Our volunteers and commissioners are irreplaceable, and thank you for a number of you being here today. They are an extension of the staff and communicate to the public. Thanks to each and every one of you that has given yourself for our cause. The residents and business owners in Rancho Mirage take great pride in our city and recognize it as being a very special place. The foundation of our great city was established by the many that came before us. We are the current torchbearers 
and will pass it on to our successors. Jeanette Seaman, thank you for sharing your husband, Alan, the most dedicated public servant I have known. Thanks go to Lucy Mepos for sharing Ron and his accounting genius. Lucy. <laughs> and Gordon Moeller, partner of Charlie, during his counselor tenure, a kind and gentle man. And thank you all to the many councilmen and women that paved the way for us today. Each mayor will have events that take place on their watch that have been started previously. I was gratified to see the Ranch Ellis Palmas Shopping Center blossom into a major revenue producer. The opening of the, the amazing dog park and the incredible amphitheater in our remodeled Rancher Mirage Community Park. The groundbreaking for the observatory, ice skating at the river, the start of the annexation process for Pulte Homes, the largest development in our city in 21 years. I am grateful to everyone that contributed. I want to wish our incoming mayor, Charles Townsend, the very best. There is no question, Charlie, that you will do a great job. A great job in leading our city. I want to pass on some advice given to me by my predecessor, Dana Hobart which I've thought about regularly. Number one, don't take yourself too seriously. And two, don't fall in love with the title. It is only temporary. <laughs> we hold it for one year. It is not a lifetime title. <clears throat> in closing, our brand is the strongest it has ever been. The 92270 zip code is one to cherish. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be the mayor of Rancho Mirage, the finest city in the Coachella Valley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, could I? Uh Say a word before you break into tears. Uh, absolutely. I would like to say that um, Ted has had an exceptionally successful year. He's done uh, a remarkable job in staying in contact with anybody who uh, has a question or an issue. Uh, he copies me on uh, much of the uh, correspondence that he's had. Uh, and every day, I look forward to reading and deleting 10% uh, of the emails that I've received because most of them are uh, Ted contacting or responding to members of the public who have one issue or another, one complaint or another, or one act of praise or another. And even when they praise the council or, or him personally, uh, he has... Uh, always taken the time to respond to those people. And with those uh, uh, who have issues that are sometimes uh, identified in the, the most uh, profane of terms, uh, he maintains his cool, he gets information for these people, and I've seen the correspondence back and forth, and those people uh, almost always end up say, apologizing for the, uh, the rancor in their tone when they began. You've been a marvelous mayor, and you uh, uh, can take that uh, for the rest of your life knowing that I truly do not believe that uh, it could have been better than it was or more successful than it was. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. I consider that a, a great honor coming from you. Uh, the next and wonderful event, uh, one that uh, we are all excited and look forward to, is the appointment of the mayor and mayor pro tem. 
And if, if I may, Christy Ramos, would you please handle that for us? Yes, thank you, Mayor. On September 14, 2004, the City Council adopted Ordinance Number 888, which established procedures for the appointment of the Mayor and Mayor Pro Tem pursuant to voter-approved measures J and K. Measure J requires that the Mayor be appointed by the City Council for a one-year period on a rotating basis. Measure K requires that after appointment of the Mayor, the City Council shall appoint as Mayor Pro Tem the Council member who, to the greatest extent possible, appears to be the person most likely to meet the eligibility requirements to succeed the current mayor in the following year. This process has proven successful and has since been adopted by other local cities. In non-election years, the appointment of mayor and mayor pro tem takes place at the second regular city council meeting in April. Prior to these appointments being made, council members are identified by the length of time they have had continuous service without having served as mayor which is indicated on the table in the staff report. Based on these service records, Charles Townsend is due to serve as mayor and Richard W. Kite is due to serve as mayor pro tem. It now gives me a great pleasure to ask uh, uh, for a voice vote for the position of mayor, Charles Townsend and mayor pro tem. Richard Kite. May we have a voice vote, please? All, all those in favor to do what? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's, let's hear it. All those in favor of our new mayor and mayor pro tem, may I hear a aye? Aye. aye. Do I hear a nay? Seeing none, it is my honor to introduce the new mayor, Charles Townsend, and the new mayor pro tem, Richard Kite. All of you, everybody, thank you. Now, Ted, if you would meet me down at the podium, we have a little something for you. Ted, down to the front. I'm already giving directions. <laughs> Are we on? There I am, <laughs> to say the least, to stand here and to say to you what a wonderful year you've had. And I have more comments when I get up there about how wonderful you've been, especially to me. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. So right now, on behalf of the City Council, for all the work you've done and all the extra hours you put in, we have a little gift for you that we'd like to present. So with that, Right over here, we have this beautiful shadow box of when you were the mayor and your city council, your staff, your badge, and your congratulations on behalf of the city council, and I will say the city of Rancho Mirage and the staff. Thank, thank you, Charlie. Thank you, all of my colleagues. Uh, it's an honor. It's a privilege to serve the city. Uh, I feel that uh, uh, the time spent 
is really fun. It's not work. When you have a city such as we have, uh, as I said from the dais earlier, the mantra is we want to keep it that way, and that's why we all work very hard to establish that. And now I will put this in my office. The only problem is it's too heavy and my wife is stronger, so I'll let her carry it. <laughs> Once again, I thank you all very much. I'm honored. Charlie, I know you'll do an incredible job. Congratulations. Thank you, Ted. Hey, no bouncing in the chair. Let's just settle down over there. I wanted to play with the chair for a minute. I need to, you know, feel, feel that, you know. Give, give, give me a minute here. Okay. I do have some comments to make. And I will get rid of them right now. And... I wrote this in thinking of uh, the history that I've spent with Rancho Mirage uh, through Gordon and all the friends uh, that we made. And uh, some of the things here Ted has related to, and uh, I will also make reference to them. So, few people know the feelings one experiences when chosen to sit in this chair as mayor the great city of Rancho Mirage. It is a responsibility that I now hold with great humility and will give my utmost dedication to. I am proud and honored to sit in this position held by all my fellow council members here on both sides of me and those before us. Ted, you were and the leadership of the inspiration you brought to our council this last year. You are truly a fine example of what one should aspire to in our lives as a representative of our city and as a representative to our many valley agencies. Your dedication to our city is unparalleled. Greatly appreciated, and I thank you, and I am proud to call you my friend, and look forward to continuing working relationship with you this year. Thank you. But we all should take a moment to recognize and remember several recent members who previously served our city. It is on their shoulders, as Ted said, that our rich legacy was built. We owe a great deal of gratitude to Alan Seaman, Ron Mepos, and yes, Gordon Muller. For their work, all recent dedicated servants who passed away in office while serving this city of Rancho Mirage. I would also like to recognize our city staff. I appreciate all the work that you do to make Rancho Mirage the best city in the valley. Our great staff brings the best overviews and outlines on issues to this city council who will make those decisions that will shape this community today and for the future. The next several years will be very important in shaping this city and the build out of Rancho Mirage as new developments 
come before us, we will continue our effort to maintain the Rancho Mirage brand and the cachet of our beautiful 92270 zip code. And I refer that to Ted because I think you coined it. <laughs> I am fortunate to be part of such a special city and a special city council. There are no ulterior motives or grandstanding on this council by anyone. The hard work set by this council is undaunting and all for the future of this, your community. We are committed to maintaining strong support of our police and our fire departments to ensure pristine maintenance of our roads and our parkways and our beautiful parks. Our incredible amphitheater, as you all know, our award-winning library that is outstanding, and soon the new observatory that is under construction. Thank you, Marilyn. Are you there? <laughs> We will continue to represent our residents to the best of our abilities. We will encourage growth and opportunity for businesses, as well as to provide assistance for the less fortunate. Fiscal responsibility and protection of our spectacular quality of life guides our decision-making process. Prudence and financial fiscal responsibility are paramount, as the money we spend is yours and it is not ours. I know that you expect and deserve responsible decisions, and we are dedicated to making them on your behalf. With your support and also with your input, as your city council will continue to move forward with unity, stability, and leadership on that path, Ranch Mirage has achieved to this date. This is my commitment as your mayor, along with your city council and the staff at City Hall. It is a great, great honor for me to be included in the ranks of mayors in the history of Rancho Mirage. I look forward to the coming year and thank you very much. Now, this is the tricky part. <laughs> Let's see, Charlie says. <laughs> Charlie doesn't say that. Charlie says, now we will move on to council board member comments. And I will start with Mr. Richard Kite. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> and you look just like a mayor right now, all set, ready to go. Oh, Congratulations. I'd like to just say a few words about uh, our going out mayor, uh, Ted, and everything that he has done over the last year. You know, there's a term, commitment to excellence, which is normally used to describe athletic performance. Here at the city of Rancho Mirage, it means fiscal responsibility and preserving the quality of life. Over the last year, Ted has given his all to achieve these goals. Ted has always supported our city and to make sure everyone knew that the zip code 92270 was quality at its highest level. We now move to a new leadership under Charlie, but those of us in, who live in 92270 will not forget Ted's leadership and his commitment to excellence. And how about a go, go Rattlers. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much, Richard. We will have Mr. Dana Hobart. Well, I've already made my comments about you, Charlie. I just would add one thing. Uh, one, of the th uh, one of the aspects of this day being repeated annually is it uh, truly brings back a warmth, a flush of warmth. Uh, as I remember, Alan and Ron and Al Gordon, uh, 
Uh, it's like uh, we're all still the family that we were to begin with, and uh, having uh, uh, all of us together again is just one of the warmest, most satisfying feelings uh, that I think a person uh, could have, other than with their grandkids. Okay, I concede that. <laughs> but, <laughs> Anyway, I'm glad that you guys could be here and uh, bring with you what you do. Thank you, Dana. Next, Ms. Iris Motfit. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. I love that sound. <laughs> and I would like to also add my congratulations to Ted and um, thank him for all of his work. Um, and many kudos to you for a remarkable year filled with many successes. You know, so many of us have been fortunate enough to have been able to take on a second or third career just when most people are thinking of sitting back and watching the world go by. And I believe you are a great example of how much can be accomplished during these midlife careers and just how rewarding these midlife years can be. I say midlife years because I expect all of us to live and thrive until we're at least 120 years old. <laughs> so again, congratulations. I wish you many more years on the council and many, many more health, happy and healthy years doing all the things that bring you pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Iris. Thank you, Iris. Ted, thank, thank you, Iris, and the, the pleasure uh, that I get and I think that all of us get is being able to share these things with a council that works so well together uh, and in harmony for that one common theme as to what is best for our city. So thank you for the kind words. Thank you, thank and, you everyone. And Mr. Mayor, if yes. I might be able to say a couple of kind words about you. Well, you may. And um, <laughs> I'll let you do that. You can say several. Okay. <laughs> I, I shall. Um, over the last few years, you've gone through many, many transitions, and some of them have been more difficult, but you have always, without a doubt, always remained strong, charming, <clears throat> fun, and dedicated, and most of all, you've really been a fine role model uh, and an inspiration to us all. And we thank you so much. I am so proud to have called you friend, but you are also part of our extended family. And I, Tommy and myself, we are thrilled that you are part of our family. Thank you, Iris. That's very sweet. <laughs> May I say that, dovetailing on that, to have the support of, of this council and this staff, not only through what now you have been here, but with Gordon, uh, it is like home to me. And uh, that is the best thing and the warmest thing I can say. What you're hearing here is not BS. This is very true conversations of people who really work together and for the vision and the future of this city. Thank you. Now we will move to approve the regular meeting minutes of April 6, 2017. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Seeing none. May we adopt the uh, minutes? Second. Please vote. Mayor Townsend, would you please put in your vote? Thank you. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you, Christy. We are now going to the consent calendar, and our wonderful city manager, Randy Biner, will you please introduce the consent items? Certainly, Mr. Mayor, I'd be pleased to. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of the city council. Your consent calendar today consists of eight items. Item number one, you've already been through. Mm -hmm. Item number two is a request to waive full reading of all ordinances that would be introduced or adopted 
pursuant to today's agenda. Can we do that today in a special because of the, the great day that it is? We can if it's been noticed. If you don't pass that, then Isaiah Hagerman will read each <laughs> ordinance and resolution word for word. That's the yeah, pros and cons of one or the other, so it's your choice. <clears throat> We're recommending approval. <laughs> Item number three on your consent calendar is second reading of an ordinance that amends the Historic Preservation Commission. Item number four on consent is second reading. Historic preservation program is streamlined and made uh, more efficient. Item number five on your consent calendar is award of contract for new pavement at the uh, city park. The um, eastern parking lot will be repaved this summer and I think it'll take about two weeks to get it completed. Uh, so it looks brand new like the rest of the park does. Uh, the lowest bidder was Maddich Corporation and we checked there and they are uh, the lowest bid, and uh, we check the references for the most responsible as well. And that is within budget for $87,200. Item number six on your consent calendar is final acceptance of the Rancho Mirage Library electrochromic glass installation. That is the tinted glass that you see in the community room and other rooms at the library. Uh, this was... Um, completed uh, per the approved plans and the budget uh, was allocated and it came in under budget. Item number seven on your consent calendar is appointment of Dana Hobart and Charles Townsend as alternate to the CVAG Executive Committee. Item number eight on your consent calendar are award of a, uh, two contracts and I'd like to have uh, Jason Howdegay, our IT manager, give a little pre brief presentation on the um, data recovery program. Jason? Yes, in today's world nowadays, we have to make sure our data is secure, protected. And part of the IT initiatives that council approved a while back ago was to make sure we have a backup plan in place. So what this entails, it incorporates a local backup that we have on site here at, with additional redundancies in place that we can store our data securely off site. Um, in case something happens, we can protect our data, we can recover that data. and we can stay current with our business process and make sure our applications are functioning, allowing us to continue our city business. So this entails new firewall security, and and it's a, I have a fun job. I love coming to work and working on technology and incorporating it and helping the business users and the citizens of Rancho Mirage. Terrific. Thank you very much, Jason. Item number nine on your consent calendar, Mr. Mayor, are demands. Uh, which are the checks that the city issues to keep the city going and staff is here to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Randy. Do any council members have questions of staff at this time? Seeing none, we will call for any members who wish to speak from the public, wish to speak regarding any of these items. Seeing none, do any council members have comments on the items? Seeing none, then I, I will move call. we adopt the consent agenda as stated. Yes, we may. Is there a second on that? Please vote. <clears throat> Council Member Weil and Mayor Townsend. Did you put in your vote? We're rebelling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We pushed. Yeah. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Next, we now will move to item number 10, the CV Link update. Does staff or council have any updates on the CV Link? There's just uh, one thing new uh, at the CVAG meeting this coming uh, uh, for, uh, Monday, next Monday, there will be a motion by the city of Rancho Mirage to uh, investigate the reasons behind uh, the mistake uh, that was made by CVAG when it submitted its application uh, to the state of California for a grant uh, of money uh, 
under the heading of active transportation. The uh, grant was intended to emphasize the benefits of the CV link to the uh, lower income communities within two miles on either side of the, um, of the CV link. When the scores were tabulated, a CVAG was miles ahead of whoever was in second place, and the numbers that they accumulated in that uh, indicated that um, there would be something like $24.3 million awarded to CVAG uh, based on their application. Uh, as others who had participated uh, in this uh, contest, so to speak, uh, other community interests, other active transportation projects, that is bicycle and pedestrian and walking uh, types of uh, environments, <clears throat> they thought that the scores that CVAG had were extraordinarily high. And they then conducted their own study of the data on which the scores were based. They came to the conclusion that there was uh, improper material added and relevant material uh, withheld uh, from the CVAG application. They made a report of that to the uh, California Transportation Commission that was sponsoring the grant, and they asked uh, the CTC to rescore CVAG's uh, data uh, pertaining to CV Link. Upon rescoring, they found that the information that was included in the CVAG application regarding lower income communities within two miles on either side of the CV Link's projected location, that they had included census tract data information, basic information, but it's called census tract data, uh, that they had included it from three cities further uh, to, to the south uh, of uh, Coachella, cities that were not affected at all by the CV link. Uh, they also found uh, <clears throat> that those cities, of course, were all bringing in census tracts uh, of very low income uh, households, uh, which was <clears throat> the objective that, that the state was trying to achieve when they set up the contest. In addition to there being the census tracts that were inappropriately added to the uh, CV link application. They also found that there were a considerable number, uh, it was about 17, 17 census tracts within two miles of the CV link uh, that were uh, essentially ha ha comprised of uh, higher income uh, residential areas, which uh, would not support uh, the basic premise of trying to uh, help the lower income uh, communities, that uh, there were about 17 of these communities, higher income communities, that were omitted from the application. So when the other competing interests saw that, they asked uh, for the state to review and compute uh, the numbers over again. And when they did this time, making allowances, correcting the shortcomings of the CVAG original application, they concluded that CVAG was no longer in first place, it had dropped to about sixth place. And um, uh, eventually CVAG got an award of uh, $5 million, but they did not get the award that would have gone to their original scoring in which the newspapers uh, advertised a bit, that was $24.3 million. So because of the recount, they went from 24.3 million down to 5 million. <clears throat> Rancho Mirage has uh, submitted a, um, a motion for the agenda of CVAG, as I said, next Monday. <clears throat> that motion is that we conduct, that CVAG authorize, uh, that CVAG conducts an investigation to determine how that error occurred. Uh, was it intentional? Was it accidental? And how did it occur so that we can be 
assured in the future that uh, this sort of thing won't, won't happen again. So that's what we're going to be. Uh, uh, my guess is the motion will be voted down. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, I would, as I will point out then, if anybody intentionally tried to increase those numbers, that would be uh, an act of fraud to defraud the state out of money that they're not entitled to, and that's a crime. Uh, and it seems to me and seems uh, to th those with whom I consult in our city uh, that uh, CVAG uh, owes it to the public to determine how that immense financial mistake was made to ensure that it never happens again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dana. Are there any members of the public who wish to comment? Because um, I, I was at a, a, a meeting several years ago where they did a, a study session in Coachella, and this was um, a firm contracted by CVAC, and they presented uh, a chart, and I'll, I'll email the chart um, to you, Mayor, if you like. You probably have all the information, but um, they showed that the, the, the CV link was not reaching uh, communities, our lower income communities. Um, at all, and they broke it down, you know, mile, two miles, and so forth. And so it's in direct contradiction to what they, CVAG then went and submitted for this money, for this grant. So I, I initially, you know, reached out to CVAG and said, this seems like a case of, of possible fraud that needs to be investigated, and of course they immediately shut me down. I asked for the application, they said, well, it's on the state's website. I said, it's, it's not on the state's website, and they said, well, contact the state, and um, they haven't responded to me. So I'm glad that we have someone like you, Mayor, to look, dig into it, because I couldn't get it. And they should, that's probably legal too. They should honor these requests. Um, I would just point out, can we trust CVAG to investigate CVAG? Can we have an independent investigation? Or maybe that would be the next step to see what CVAG does first. Um, also, should we even, sh shouldn't we be asking to get rid of Tom Kirk? He seems to be one of the problems. I don't know if he's the whole problem, but he's, he seems to be a problem. He has a pattern of consistently um, denying, doing things behind closed doors, denying uh, public meetings and public hearings, um, frustrating uh, the process, and acting as if he is, even just his attitude, he acts as if he is, he is almost the king of the Coachella Valley and um, does everything basically on his own the best he can. And I really would like to urge uh, the council to uh, go a step further and try to get rid of uh, Tom Kirk and try to get an investigation for fraud. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrington. <laughs> Are there any other people who would like to make a comment on this issue? All right, seeing none, then we will go to public hearings. And for that, Mr. Randy Binder, please tell us about number 11. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'll turn this over to our associate planner, Josh Altop. Josh. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, council members. Before you is an application for a preliminary development plan, which provides a site plan and architectural details of three floor plans with nine different elevations to be distributed on 27 lots. Uh, the proposed residences are located on the east side of Duval Drive, just north of Tuscany Residential Development. The yellow rectangle represents a 10-acre parcel site, or project site. Surrounding land uses include Tuscany Residential Development to the south, to the east and north, unincorporated vacant land in the city's sphere of influence with a future school site to the east, and to the west, single-family homes within cathedral city limits. The name of the proposed development is Verdana and consists of one 10-acre parcel of land which will be segmented into a total of 27 single-family residential lots along with multiple lettered lots for common areas. The lots range in size from 11,400 to 18,200 square feet. The project's density is 2.7 units per acre, which is lower than the four dwelling units per acre that is permitted in the zone. And for comparison purposes, Tuscany, which is located immediately to the south, has a density of 3.6 units per acre, so just under one unit less per acre. This is a slide that shows the site's grading. The site is generally flat, with drainage flowing from the northwest to the southeast. 
the existing residential pads on the adjacent properties to the south within Tuscany range in elevation from 327 adjacent to Duval Drive to 316 along the project's eastern boundary. Comparison purposes, Verdana's proposed pad heights adjacent to Tuscany are one and a half to two and a half feet lower in elevation. So this new project will be lower than Tuscany's existing elevation. So we're going lower than to, to preserve the views. Uh, the lots themselves closest to Duval Drive are approximately equal in height to the curb on the south side and then are 18 inches above the curb north of the main entry as the street naturally decreases towards the north. Uh, this shows a layout of how the homes are provided. It is on page 10 of the exhibit booklet. It shows the various detail options for each of the home, which include architectural style, elevation type, color scheme, and reverse floor plans. And when applied, this will create dozens of options resulting in a customized subdivision. The builder is proposing nine of each of the floor plans. The red shaded box are plan ones, the yellows are plan twos, and the blue shades are plan threes. All the units are situated to meet the minimum side yard setbacks, each exceed rear yard requirements, and approximately one third of the residences, which are shown with the green stars on the slide, have larger than the required 25 foot front yard. This creates visual interest to the overall streetscape. The two homes located adjacent to Duval Drive have approximately a 75 foot setback from Duval, which help mitigate the impacts of traffic noise along Duval Drives. Uh, as proposed, all homes comply with the development standards as required by the RM density zone. Uh, three floor plans will range in size Excuse from me, John. Yes, sir. Excuse me one second. I'm looking at the last page of the document uh, that we have for this item, uh, and it's got that map sort of in the layout in red. Uh, where, where is Avenue, I think it was at 35, where is Ramon Road in relation to this? Because uh, the streets don't show up on this document. Okay. So just for, just for understanding, um, we're looking at North Ramon. So on this slide, this is the visual. You can see Rancho Mars High School to the right. Tuscany's there in the middle. We're going to go approximately three quarters of a mile north of Ramon Road. So this is our very northern boundary in the city. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see. Okay, I think I'm on here. Six, seven, eight. There we go. Okay. The. Uh, Excuse me for a second there. Uh, the floor plans will range between 2930 and 3200 square feet, which includes a garage. Uh, several options have been added for each of the homes, which include uh, providing a greater variety. Some of the options include converting a portion of the attached casita into a third bedroom and bath. Another option is converting the den into a third bedroom. Um, all room sizes are consistent with the minimum dwelling unit room size standards of the zoning code. Uh, these next several slides shall show uh, some of the proposed architecture, colors, and materials. With three architectural designs, three color schemes, various materials, and mixed elevations, uh, no two homes are likely to be duplicated, thus providing greater architectural variety and achieving the city's goal of the neighborhood having a custom home appearance. Uh, the developer has chosen desert modern contemporary architecture. The homes have varying heights to articulate mass and flat surfaces. Exterior materials would be a mixture of painted plaster with a sand finish and desert hues, with each home having a main and a secondary color. Uh, the plaster is further complemented by stone accents, stacked stone ledger, or masonry unit tiles. Further various metal eyebrows are added over the windows to provide solar protection and accents at certain locations. Uh, this slide shows the, th the roof plans. Uh, essentially, within every roof is the highest parapet, which is at five feet, which will provide full screening of rooftop mechanical equipment and future solar panels. Overall roof heights range from 11 to a maximum of 17 feet, which is three feet below the maximum allowed by code. This slide shows the project entry. Uh, will include two inner aisle planters, which will contain a 36-inch box Palo Brea tree, a base of desert shrubs, and cobble, rock cobble, and the entry keypad. Uh, there are California fan palms that will line each side of the entry. The paving for the entry itself will consist of gray granite interlocking pavers in a herringbone pattern. And a condition has been included that requires a more thoughtful landscape design transition between Tuscany to the south and their parkway and the subject parkway for continuity. Here are the proposed gates and walls. The main entry gate is constructed from wrought iron and provides transparency into the subdivision. 
A six foot tall perimeter wall will be constructed at a gray slump stone block with an El Dorado stone chisel cap. At every shared lot line along the perimeter, there will be a six foot six gray split face block column with a decorative cap. This will add an extra element of design providing a more attractive appearance. Uh, within each front yard, there's a series of 36-inch box and 24-inch box trees. Some species include Palo Blanco, African sumac, and De desert willow. Uh, the front yards will include portions of mounding and inorganic ground cover and will include two different types of rock and cobble. Uh, no turf is being proposed for the entire project. Uh, in summary, staff has not received any correspondence regarding the project. Uh, the proposal is similar to other projects throughout the city and maintains a low density, high quality standards that have made Rancho Mirage a sought out destination. Additionally, this proposal does well to achieve goal number one in the land use element of the city's general plan, which is recited as follows, the preservation and enhancement of predominantly low density, high quality residential character of the city. Staff is recommending that the council approve PDP 15003. And this concludes my presentation and I'd be happy to address any uh, questions the council may have. And just for clarity, uh, Dana, I have a couple pictures of the site if it helps kind of bring some visuals uh, to kind of get a recognition. This is looking northbound on Duval Drive at the edge of Tuscany. So this, I'll go back. This first slide is looking down the property line of Tuscany so you can see the grade change between the two properties. Tuscany is quite a bit higher. Uh, looking directly north up Duval, this sidewalk will then continue uh, northbound where the project frontage is. Kind of, you can see the transition there. That's will all become part of the new street, new curb, new gutter, new parkway. Uh, Josh, how, yes, how far is it? Is the end of the project from the street that uh, goes to the west at the very end of Duval? Is that 35th Street? I believe so. It's it's uh, 35th. We're probably how far from that are we? Less than a half a mile south. Okay. Just south of that. Yeah. If you hit the end of Tuscany, it'll be immediately on your right. Josh, can you uh, briefly describe the property that's to the east? Where is that school property? And is that where the new elementary school is going to go? That is correct. Uh, the school district owns the 80 acres where the high school site is located. Um, they own the full 80 acres. Uh, the 60 acres was developed for the high school. So in this slide, you can see the 20 acres that are left at the top of the property to the north. That will abut this property. Uh, we did put a disclosure as part of their CCNRs that they would have to make the homeowners aware that there is a potential future school site to the east so that as homeowners buy into the property, they know what the site's future gonna be. And the access road on the north, what's the distance between that access road and the property? That's the ring road that goes yes. around the high school? The ring road uh, lines up with the access road Dana was talking about. It's approximately half a mile to the north in, in comparison. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Josh. Are there any further comments from this council? Can, can we see our, um, our finance director's, administrative director's house on that photograph <laughs> that he just bought? It's close. <laughs> Do you have to recuse yourself? If... I don't get to vote, so I'm Wait, okay. no, you don't have to vote on it, so okay. It's not his house. I'm sure the bank still owns it. <laughs> this is, this, uh, Josh, this project, uh, from the time it started, we have um, actually reduced the density from the original submission. Is that correct? Uh, <clears throat> Just a brief background. This project came through in 2007. Uh, the economy didn't do so well, so the housing market stopped. The same developer is still part of the project. They've owned the land. Um, it originally was for 27 lots back in 2007. Uh, the density has always stayed the same, so the map is still current. So now we're just looking at the architecture and the landscaping for those lots. And, and, and wasn't there a, an additional ingress or egress added on this? There was two things. The high school used it as an access road through this site when they were getting started because Rattler wasn't completed, so they had to get through the site. This is actually the same location where the water and the sewer runs through the middle of their site. So water and sewer has been installed to get to the high school. The developer got to take advantage of that by having the access so the water and sewer is already installed. Um, without getting too complicated, there was a, a long-term plan to extend the road from Cathedral City into Rancho Mirage, and through discussions with Public Works, it was decided through our future street plan that it wouldn't be necessary to put the road there. So that got removed. Okay, thank you. Josh, uh, do we know an approximate price what these homes are going to sell for? I don't want to speak for the developer, but I've heard between high fives and low sixes. What was that again? Uh, high 500,000 to low 600,000 range. Thank you. All right. 
Are there any more questions from the Council of Staff? All right. Seeing none, we'll now open it to public hearings. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak on this project? Is it 30? You know what? Actually, Charlie, it's 30. Street. And I'll tell you what, uh, this is uh, Mr. This is Mr. Jeffrey Payne. He's a developer for the project, so I'd like to let him speak. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, your honorable new mayor and council members and staff. Um, we actually bought this property in 2003 and started the process at that time. The city then, after spending a year with us, sent it back to the county. The county then took a couple years to go through its process, and right before the hearing, the city changed its mind and wanted it back in the city, so we went back through the city process, and of course, by that time, the economy failed. But we're here. Hmm. I thank uh, your planning department. We spent over a year on these plans just in its process, and we went through a couple rounds of the ARB. To answer some of your questions, the property to the street to the north is 30th. And that's the one that goes westerly over to Date Palm. Uh, and now it continues to the school. I understand the school is going to, school district is going to start the school project behind us in the near future. Um, we are, needless to say, anxious to get started on this project. We, we've tried to think a lot about one that we have 27 homes that because of yeah. different elevations and changes and everything we actually have 27 different homes um, the trend right now of course is mid-century modern and modern and we try to go after some of these things that were popular then by some very famous architects we were particularly inspired by koenig Pierre Koenig and some of these things. For example, we have a floating fireplace in one of the units. And so um, if there's any particular questions I can answer, I'd be happy to ask. Yes, uh, how would you describe the compatibility of the design and structure of what you're proposing with the houses immediately adjacent to you? Well, the houses right next to us, Tuscany, was originally proposed and approved by the county. They're actually kind of a, you know, a small lot. In fact, many of those homes do not even have um, homes large enough for pools. Um, at this point in time, fortunately or unfortunately, the Spanish design is not that popular, even on a resale basis. And as you may remember, we actually originally had home designs approved for this that were much more Spanish or Tuscan in style. Um, we started a web page uh, about six months ago, and we have over 200 people on the interest list right now. Um, and interestingly enough, we have a, quite a few people that are from the Tuscany neighborhood and saying that they're anxious for this new design. I won't say that it is in complete, you know, it, we weren't trying to be another Tuscany uh, to the south of us. Have you had an opportunity to meet with the school district to find out what part of the construction is going to be closest to these residences? Um, I haven't, I mean, we've spoken at length for years with the school district and we've attempted to keep up to where they are and their planning. I do know that there aren't buildings that are that close because they will have a field behind us. At one time we talked about us having an entry at our back at the very end of our project at that retention basin so that if we had children in our neighborhood that they could enter in right through there rather than having to go all the way around 30th or some other route. Um, in our negotiations with them when we gave them an easement through our property, that was one of the original bullet points of to approve and that uh, the school district did not want that and actually when we spoke to planning years ago here, planning did not really want that. 
Okay. I have a question. Yes. The modernism trend, is it just to California or Palm Springs or nationwide? What's your feel on that? In my opinion, yes. especially since we are doing... Why are we into this <laughs> ongoing? Well, I mean, part of that is because of the desert and its architectural leadership throughout the nation. I mean, people have looked to the Coachella Valley for years as the leader of design. Right. And so, again, we're the leaders. But with that said, it is pretty popular all over. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing it more through my children because I have three children who are yeah. adults and one of them is moving to New York and her um, almost husband and her are looking, they're trying to find mid-century modern, want to build a kind of contemporary home in New York. Amazing. Um, yeah. My sister, my, my other daughter lives in San Francisco area and the design push is there. I think, <clears throat> I'm not an architect. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually a bean counter by background, so I mean, I'm, I'm far from the creative side. But I think one thing that is popular about the contemporary mid-century modern design is that it allows for a lot of interpretation on the decorating of the inside. Whereas if you have a Spanish house, and, and I'm one of those few, I, I completely rebuilt in 1923 Spanish house in Long Beach, and I did two more yeah. like that. So I'm a big lover of Spanish houses. Yeah. My house out here is contemporary. I built Vista Mirage here in Ranch Mirage, and so that's Spanish. Um, yes. So I, I, I don't, I can't say specifically, but I think it's because of the flexibility of the interior design. Your own, <coughs> own creative ability inside. Correct. Basically, right? Correct. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Are there any other questions? Can I, uh, Mr. Mayor, can I make a comment? Yes, you may. Vista Mirage, 67 houses on 18 acres. Correct. So the uh, staff is recommending approval subject to the conditions and findings in the staff report. And Mr. Payne, you've read the staff report and concur? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's it? No other questions? Thank you. Are there any other people who would like to speak on this subject? Seeing none, I will close the public hearings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do any council members have any further comments on this item? Seeing none, I will call for a motion. Is there a motion? Okay, I would move that the uh, City Council approve, number one, the filing of a categorical exemption of environmental impact pursuant to CEQA, section 15162, and number two, approval of preliminary development plan case number PDP15003, based upon the content, findings, and conditions in the staff report. Do I have a second? Second. Please vote. Motion passes 4-0 with Council Member Hobart abstaining. Right. All right, it has passed. And we will now recess into closed session. Mr. Quintanilla, will you please introduce the closed session items? Yes, I will, Mr. Mayor. The City Council at this point is going to recess into closed session pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9 regarding four potential initiation of litigation items, the pending case of Veronica Juarez versus City of Rancho Mirage, and we have another pending case that's listed on the agenda. Uh, the name's not specified on the agenda since disclosure may jeopardize existing settlement negotiations. That's it. Thank you, Steve. We are now recessed. Thank you, everybody, for attending.